Hello all and welcome back to this course on digital systems. In the last lecture we looked at the idea of Boolean algebra, the laws and also the way in which you can use the laws to sort of simplify and uh, you know a given Boolean expression. Okay. So what we are going to do now is we are going to go one step further from there and say how do we even get this boolean expression first of all right so suppose for example you are given a black box so you are given a black box like this which says you know there are so many inputs okay a naught a1 a2 all the way to a n minus 1 ok. So, let us say there are so many inputs and there are a different number of outputs. So, y 0, y 1, y m minus 1 ok. This one is n minus 1 right. So, what we are going to do now is if you are just given a black box like this you do not know the functional representation of let us say the output y naught in terms of the input variables. That is this is some function f naught of a naught a 1 a n minus 1. Likewise, this is some other function a n minus 1 and this is a uh, the mth function. So, essentially f naught to f m minus 1 are unknown, right. If this function was known and you had a Boolean representation for uh, if this Boolean function f naught to f minus 1 were known, then of course you can do Boolean simplification and find out what is the simplest representation of that function. But the point is since this is a black box, you have no idea to determine this. So, the best way that you can actually do this is to excite the black box, ok. Uh, let me call it black box, ok. The black box with 2 power n input combinations, right. You know that the output, all the outputs are functions of a naught to a n minus 1, there are n inputs and therefore you can simply excite this, uh, you know, black box with 2 power n input combinations and then figure out what is the response for each of these uh, combinations, ok. And what you obtain with that is actually nothing but the truth table, ok. So, you will get, so let us say you are able to achieve, obtain the truth table. So, what is this? Basically, we are saying a naught, uh, I will say a n minus 1, a n minus 2 all the way to a naught, ok. For each output y naught, y1, y2, I will just show it only for y naught in this case. I am going to get a, so I am going to go all zeros. So, let us hypothetically take one example here, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, ok. This is, let us say this is 1 and so on. All the way, I will go to 1, 1, 1 and I will get, let us say, some 0, ok. So, you have some combinations of zeros and 1s, ok, with respect to each input combination, ok. And therefore, now the job for us is to figure out what these functions f naught to f, f m minus 1 are, ok. We want first a Boolean expression and then we will see how to simplify that Boolean expression because I uh, will show you by way of an example, if you do not simplify it, the number of logic gates that you need to implement that particular logic is going to go out of hand very quickly, right. So, let us 
go back and we'll start with a very very simple example okay so let us start with the example of a nand gate okay a b y okay we actually know this function by by the intuitive definition of an and gate uh, we just said y is equal to a into b so we said 0 0 should be 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 and only when both inputs are 1 the output can be a 1 okay so if this were a black box right of course you know you it is by comparing the truth table i showed you that you can determine that this is an and gate right but if i were to now obtain the boolean expression from first principles what should i do so you observe that the function takes the value 1 only when both inputs are high okay so if i look at this the the what should the value of a and b be so that i get the value 1 it means here it should be a and b corresponding just to this term okay and since there is no other term where the uh, you know no other combination where the output goes to 1 here you can just say y is equal to a into b okay now i'll show you uh, uh, you know maybe i'll just take the nand gate as an example okay so that you see for yourself what happens here okay a b y and this one i told you we know that this is a b bar okay so what is this it is a b um, maybe i'll just make this as y and and this as y nand okay what is y nand it is 1 1 1 0 okay exactly the inverted version of this so now let us look at what happens to the output when it goes high okay i'll tell you what why we are doing all this i'm just trying to motivate this with a very simple example first so here if i want the output to be 1 when a and b happen to be 0 0 the only way that can be done is by making it a bar into b bar okay likewise if i want the output to be 1 when the input happens to be a is, a is 0 and b is 1 then it can be done only by this so you note what we are doing here we are basically saying find the input value right the 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 boolean expression that will cause this term to just go high that's what we are saying right that's why we are saying it is a bar likewise it is a bar into b okay and on the uh, other combination it is a b bar okay the output is zero for the fourth case so we will not worry about that okay so therefore this is what we got y and and y nand is actually equal to a bar b bar okay or a bar b or a b bar so what does this mean it means that if the input combination happens to be 0 0 right then this term is what is going to cause the output to go high remember this is an or condition with the other combinations okay so when it is 0 0 this a bar b bar is obviously going to go high every other term is going to go to 0 so there is only one term in this expression that is going to go high corresponding to that particular combination and we are writing it as an or of these boolean expressions that cause it to go high okay but now 
how do we relate this to this it's not obvious right so therefore you now have to go ahead and rely on your laws of boolean algebra which is basically right so i will take this term okay a bar into b bar plus b plus a b bar so what is this b plus b bar is obviously 1 okay b is 0 then b bar is 1 or b is 1 then b bar is 0 right the sum is always the or is always 1 so this is equal to a bar plus a b bar okay and then again we use the distributive law x plus y z is x plus y into x plus z in boolean algebra and therefore this will be a bar plus a into a bar plus b bar so this is equal to again a plus a bar is 1 so a bar plus b bar right now again going by the de morgan's laws we know that a bar plus b bar is nothing but a into b whole bar and hence the two expressions do match exactly and we have been able to systematically arrive at this expression now okay here by simply looking at the truth table okay uh likewise just one more example okay you i i urge you to try it for the or nor combination and figure out what is happening okay um for example you know your xor gate the two input xor gate a b y okay so 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so 0 1 1 0 you are just counting the uh, if you are indicating if the number of ones is odd or even if it is odd it is one output otherwise it is zero right so therefore this is the output so, so very simple here look at this output when it goes high this is simply going to be a bar b okay and this is going to be a b bar so therefore y has to be right i'll call this xor is equal to a bar b plus a b bar so in this case the output like in the case of the and gate comes out in its simplest form right there is no further boolean simplification that is even possible here and this is the exact expression that we had written earlier also a b bar plus a bar b okay so these are just some very simple examples right uh, now the point is this can be extended to any number of inputs any number of outputs obviously because you are just going to write a different truth table for the different output okay so what we'll do is we'll now look at like i said right uh the you know a n minus 1 a n minus 2 all the way to a 0 and i'm going to look at the output y 0 so this is 0 0 0 0 1 Zero zero. Okay, I'll put a one also here. One zero, zero zero, all the way to one one, and then it will it will go on. You'll get all two power n combinations. One one one. Okay. So what we'll do is let's say for all zeros you had a one. Okay. Um, actually, I'll take a very um, very trivial example. Okay, here let's just look at that. you know particular case here for us to understand okay so what is going to happen is let's say my output is 1 0 1 0 1 like this it's just alternating okay so the last one is one this will be zero okay so this is the output for y not okay we do not know what that function is we have no idea what the boolean expression is and we got to figure this out so the idea is very simple so if you uh, if you look at this k 
case again here simply look at the outputs the input combinations for which the output goes to logic high okay so this is logic high for input combination 0 that is when all the inputs happen to be 0 so this is a n minus 1 bar a n minus 2 bar all the way to a naught bar okay similarly this is uh, this is true now for a n minus 1 a n minus 2 uh, a 1 is basically 1 so if you look at this it is a n minus 1 bar a n minus 2 bar all the way i'll just write this also explicitly a 1 bar a 1 and a naught bar right similarly here you will have some combination so effectively what we have written here is a very standard canonical representation of the boolean outputs okay each of these terms is basically called a min term okay so basically it is an and of the input variables that will result in the output going high okay so therefore if you look at this y0 the function is going to be given by sum it's going to be a sum of products why because each of these terms is basically a product is an and condition right and we are now going to or them together we are going to or we are going to add them together that's why this is called the sum of product representation for the boolean uh, you know truth table representation right it's a standard canonical form is what they call it in a textbook right and the logic again as i told you effectively by writing this as you know a n minus 1 bar a n minus 2 bar a naught bar plus a n minus 1 bar a n minus 2 bar all the way to i'll also write this actually a 1 a naught bar right plus whatever other terms right so if you look at this case every alternate uh, every alternate uh, out uh, row basically has a one so there are totally 2 power n combinations half of which are one and the other half is zero so there are 2 power n minus 1 terms that we are going to have here so if you look at this you will have 2 power n minus 1 min terms right so this is 2 power n minus 1 min terms okay and you add them up you make a sum of all these terms and that is basically what you call as the sum of product canonical representation right